Leading the revolution of talk radio. Doug. Doug. Earth. Earth. On AM News Talk 1360. I only mentioned that because I saw an interview with Steve Cropper not too long ago. Or Steve Cropper was a great guitar player. Stax Vol, Booker T, and those guys. And he said he never got over Otis's death because Otis was such a giant to him. There's a great story. There was a guy, local guy, um, who may or may not still be around. Johnny Day, entertainer, singer, record artist. And uh, make a long story short, Johnny opened for James Brown a couple of times until James Brown said, I don't ever want this guy opening for me again. But Johnny Day was one hell of a singer, and he was a white guy who sounded very, very black. Otis is uh, Stax Volt. He finds Johnny falls in love with Johnny. I don't mean sexually in love, just falls in love with him. And they had all kinds of great plans for this guy. Stax Bolt did what Otis wanted him to do. Then Otis died. And along with it went Johnny Day's career with, uh, uh, with Stax Bolt uh, uh, Records. I have no idea where John is. The last time I... I haven't heard from him in a long time. Anyway, um, it's weird about gay straight. How many of you, for example, when uh, Robert Reed died... Did you know that Robert Reed was gay when he died? You know Robert Reed is a uh, Brady Bunch? See, I'd known that for years, but I don't know where or how. Rock Hudson, I knew about that one for years, too. Now, if you want to, if you want to read Outing, there is, a, uh, there is a magazine, I think, where they do that. But Musto does it all the time. Musto outed Rosie. And she called him a Nazi. Called him every name in the book. And then Rosie came up. Um, and what's weird, too, just to take this one step further... Um, what a lovely topic. If you go back, guys like um, Robert Taylor, the actor, who's apparently bisexual. Um, who's the other guy? Cary Grant. Definitely swung both ways. Uh, who was the other guy? Gary Cooper. Another guy, the pride of Lou Gehrig. A lot of those fellas did. And a lot of the actresses, too. Uh, Melinda Dietrich was notorious. Uh, Garbo. Well, Garbo was mostly, Garbo was mostly lesbian. Uh, although she had a few straight affairs. And who was the other? Oh, Barbara Stanwyck. Despite a couple of marriages, apparently was, uh, was, apparently was bisexual. Um, and who's the other one? Oh, Sandy Dennis. That one always struck me as a little bit bizarre. If you remember Sandy Dennis, who I loved. Oh, my God. Nobody said that better than Sandy Dennis and the out of Oh, my God. And they remade the movie horribly with Steve Martin. Why would you remake a classic, the out of Oh, my. She was almost as good at, oh, my God, as James Brown was at going, good God. Good God. Nobody did good God better than James, and nobody did, oh, my God, better than Sandy Dennis. Well, now that we have that out of the way. So what do you want to talk about this last hour of this ridiculously stupid program? I'm going to open it up to you and say, hey, what do you want to talk about? I'll give you a couple of minutes. Something on your gourd. Give me a holler. 333 Maybe you got a stupid question. Maybe you got a press conference question. Maybe you heard something that was discussed earlier you'd like to add or detract or go in an entirely different direction. Perfect opportunity for someone or some folks who never call a radio program. So I always wanted to talk about this, but they was always talking about something else. Well, I ain't talking about squat right now. So here you are. So there you are, and here I am, and here is the show. That was my George Goble impression. 333-136-0412. The phones are dead. The phones are dying. I'm dead and dying. So what is it that you would like to discuss in any way, shape, or form? While I'm waiting for 9 million people to call, and if none of you call, you'll just force me to forge ahead. Thursday, Lawrence Gaines. We'll be aboard. I've got a couple of days off next week, and uh, Bill Green will be filling in on one of those days. Jay Nugent will be here next Sunday night. I mean, what am I saying? Next Sunday night. That's the oldie show. Jane will be aboard next Thursday. Uh, Jane Nugent, her knobby knees, her mustache, and good morning. Yes, she will be here in all of her glory. Jane will be naked this time, by the way. She's always excited to see her a cappella. Doesn't have anybody to talk about? What a bunch of adults. I'm blaming you because I have nothing to talk about. Uh, we discussed earlier the Anna Nicole died of a drug overdose. Despite everything you heard, it was just 
too many drugs, and now they still have to do an official inquest into the death of her son, which opens today in the Bahamas. And then there's the paternity of um, the girl, Danny Lynn, who was the, you know, father of Danny Lynn. Uh, other than that, that's about the size of it. And the Tony Snow thing, which is very sad, as it always is. You know, what is interesting when somebody famous, whether it's Mrs. Edwards or Tony Snow, come down, especially with an illness, a life-threatening illness, it really kind of levels the playing field psychologically. Well, you may be rich, you may be famous, you may be this, you may be that. But down deep, what are you first and foremost? You're a human being. And we're all, what? Human beings. And it can happen to anybody, no matter how rich, no famous, good-looking, old, young, color of skin, whatever. It's called life. The good, the bad, and the ugly thereof. And when it hits somebody famous... I don't know why, uh, but it, it, it really hits you in an extra way. It's like, it's just like a, well, again, it's just part of that. It sort of equals everything out. You may be rich, you may be famous, you may be notorious, you may be this, but again, first and foremost, you're human. Bill North Huntington, hello there. How you doing? Good. You mentioned uh, Cary Grant definitely was gay. I know there was a rumor because he lived with Randolph Scott. Well, let me tell you something, sir. I can show you an interview that was done with Randolph Scott from a book called Hollywood Gays. Okay. Add to that Cary Grant fondling the author of the book in the back of the car. <laughs> and the and the book and the author of the book was gay, okay? Uh and I'm gonna take a wild guess and say I think Cary swung both ways, yeah. Okay, thank you. Again, you read the you read the interview with Scott, it it's almost like the icing on the cake. Alan, hello there. Hi, Dougie, how are you? Good, thank you. Two things. Uh first of all, uh, earlier this week, uh the weekend parade magazine there's something about Catherine Hepburn being bisexual. Never heard that before. You heard that? That's been the story. Well, the interesting story is there's a new book out about her and Tracy, and the book suggests something that I that that has always been alluded to down through the years in other books that their relationship was not a sexual one, mm. that they were. They connected on many, many, many levels. All right, that's number one. Having said that. Uh, Ms. Hepburn definitely had an affair had an affair with John Ford. That's been corroborated by his brother. She had some other affairs along the way, but the overall consensus of Hepburn was that she was bisexual. And again, many of these folks were. Stanwick was bisexual. Uh, Robert Taylor was straight, but he had a few flings along the way. Cary Grant apparently was quite bisexual. Uh, are you familiar with an actor named Farley Granger? Yeah, I read that in the paper, yeah. too. Yeah, uh, Farley, Farley Granger was he's married. He's still alive. He's like 81 years well, old. Well, he's got, got, he's got, got thing guy. guy's got a book out. He's been living with the same dude for 40 years, yet he yeah. was married to Shelley Winters. Well, that doesn't say much, but anyway. <laughs> and apparently he is a bisexual. And I believe in bisexual. I happen not to be one. I'm straight. But I have met people who claim to be bisexuals, and they have. I've talked to them enough in enough ways, shapes, and forms to say, yeah, there is such a thing. Okay, I'll take it. Hey, listen, other thing. I want tickets to Asparagus about a month ago from you. It was a good play, and it was a nice theater. I, I want you to know, my wife and I went, had a good time. I'm glad you did, and I thank you for the feedback. 333-1360-412, area code. All right, who else are we going to out this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, Jane, hello there. Jane, are you there? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to know if you knew anything about the daughter of um, Cary Grant and Diane Cannon. You mean what the they, daughter... They had a... They had a daughter together. Yeah, uh, the daughter was acting for a period of time. She's a very uh -huh. pretty girl who looks a lot more like Diane than, looks th than Cary Grant. She was uh -huh. doing some acting, but where the acting career went and where she is today, I have not got a clue. She's got to be, what, about 25 or 30? At least, because Diane Cannon is about <coughs> 66. Okay. Yeah, I just wondered. Thank yeah, you, at, Doug. Okay, thank you, by the way. If those, if he was not... Uh, he, he was... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Diane Cannon was married to Grant, and uh, that's when Gary got interested in acid, big time. And he went on all these LSD trips and whatever. Anyway, <clears throat> anybody else you want out at 333-1360-412, the area code. Pound 1360, 
if you're Verizon Wireless, here's another go back to bisexuality. I had this guy in New York. <laughs> what a character. I could, I'd love to tell you the guy's name, too, only because it's a funny name. And he was married with a couple of kids. And uh, once every couple of weeks, he would schlep over to New York City from, uh, from where he lived out on the island and go to these gay bars. And I said to him, I said, Gordon, there must be gay boys out on the island. Why the hell do you have to go? I don't want to embarrass my wife. I said, you mean your wife doesn't know? No. And he would go and have sex with guys. And I, we talked about it. And I said, well, you having sex with guys, you have sex with your wife, a couple of kids, blah, 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 blah. Are you indeed a gay person who was able to lead a straight existence? Which many gays do. There are, there are many gay people who are gay who lead straight existences and have children and intercourse and this, that, and the other thing. And you say, well, how do you do that? And the answer is very simple. You close your eyes. When you close your eyes, you can be with anybody, as anybody will tell you. Stop and think about that sometime. This is something nobody ever talks about. And I shouldn't talk about it. But I'm an idiot. But we know that. I don't know about women. I do not know about women. The older I get, the more I realize, the less I know about. But I know about men. <laughs> Being one of those dirty scuzzballs. I'll go back to the beginning. You close your eyes, it could be anybody. And let's take that one step further. How many of you have closed your eyes and pretended it was somebody else? No one ever talks about that. No one ever talks about that. All of these different sex shows, Dr. Fuhrman, that lady uh, who's on all night there, that oxygen lady, that, oh, that lady, that, that lady will kill sex quicker than, uh, what's that lady's name? Sue Johansson. What is her name? Sue Johansson. I love this one. This is a vibrator. And I'm going, this is a football. And I'm, what the bleep? You know, this is the way it works. We have an on and off switch. Fine. You want to turn it on? Then she turns it on. You know, this must be an old-fashioned one. I have to yell over the sound of the vibrator. Don't they have silent ones anywhere? Ah, thing sounds like a steam shovel, for crying out loud. Anyway, where was I going with this? I have no idea, man. Let's, uh, I said this was open conversation. What do you people want to talk about? 333-1360-412, the area code. When Raymond Bird died, I knew that. I'd known it for years. I would never guess that Raymond Bird I had a Bird friend of mine. I had a friend of mine. He said he could never watch Ironside again or Perry Mason once he found out. And I said, why? Are you that homophobic? He said, no. It's just such a culture shock. I can't handle it, which I thought was still stupid. But anyway, to go back to my friend Gordon in New York... Gordon very simply said he liked both men and women, which made perfect sense if that's your predisposed, you know, your predisposition. Guys in jail, uh, and there have been studies done on this, something like 85% of the men in prison, or 90, I forget the figure, but it's exorbitantly, inordinately high, 85-90% of the guys who have homosexual experience in jail, once they come back out, they're straight. They go back to a straight life. Uh, the homosexuality is done out of desperation or maybe done as a power trip, up, 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 especially homosexual rape. Oh, straight rape, too. All about power control, yada, 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 yada. But most of them do go back. Then you have certain guys. What, what, am, I, what am I, Dr. Laura with this crap? <laughs> Dr. Laura. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Laura Foonman. Anyway, uh, where is it going with this? Well, I'll tell you who was into that. Uh, Sammy the Bull. Sammy the Bull had gay sex. But it was that power trip number. It had nothing to do with, you know, it was just all about power. Anyway, why am I talking about this stuff? I don't even know my social security number, and I haven't had any sex period in such a good long period of time. I've almost forgotten what it's about. Nah, it's not quite true. It's like typing on how to ride a bike. You never forget. AM News 1360. <laughs> all right, so this is an open conversation segment that we're dying a horrible death. And uh, that means, very simply, that uh, I've got to come up with a subject, which I will in about six minutes. But in the meantime, anybody have anything they want to talk about? We'll call this the bail out the talk. What do you want to talk about? Anybody... I, I, either that or we'll call this the uh, <laughs> out your favorite superstar. Yeah, exactly. I, but my problem is that the, the current ones, well, bisexuality is so common in, in Hollywood. Anyway, that's another thing, which is kind of... I'll, I'll take that one step further, all right? I always found this interesting. I told a story about uh, being in the bar one night and asking a guy to dance. You heard me tell that story. I think so, yeah. Yeah. It was on the other, it was a, all those lounges are dark. 
And I had a few pops, and I see this blonde on the other side of the bar from a crowded room, you know. And I go over, tap him on the, tap her on the shoulder, and it turned out it was a guy. I apologized. About 45 minutes later, I see another blonde. I tap him on the shoulder. It's the same guy. Couldn't believe it. <laughs> Maybe an hour and a half later, when I'm good and polluted, I went over and asked him again. The guy was ready to punch me out, and I said, Buster... I apologize. I really and truly apologize. Add to that the fact I'm very drunk, but you may be a guy, but I got news for you. You're still the best-looking broad in the place, and then I walked away. Now, take that one step further. You, I'm sure, have seen on these different shows, Springer and whatever, the trannies, all right, the transvestites, the transsexuals. Some of these people are incredible to look at. Some of these... Men, women, shims is what they're called. Uh, they are just, whoa, you know, my God. And some of them, even when you get close up, are, woohoo, because you're saying, eh, it's all about makeup and a wig. And trust me, a lot of it is. But every once in a while, yo. Now, cut to another scenario. This is also interesting. And I would suggest to you that this may be what uh, would settle your your uh, uh, sexuality and who and what you are once and for all. Stop and think about this. Because I did. And here's the reason I thought about it. Not long, but I thought about it. A number of years ago, we had on the show um, these guys who dressed as women. <coughs> Female impersonators or whatever. They were all gay fellas. And they, they, were, they did shows at the different gay bars, okay? Dressed as women. And a couple, of them, a couple of them were very camp, camp-looking in that, you know, they had huge this and da-da-da-da-da. And you could tell it was a guy, you know, done in drag doing his Milton Berle impression. Milton Berle invented that, by the way, going in drag. Just show sure enough to win, Milton. I got 10000 bucks riding on you, Jackie Gleason. You know that story. Milton Berle versus Forrest Tucker. They were going to have a bet. Well, they had a bet. And everybody was taking wages. And Jackie Gleason walks over to Milton. He says, Milton, I got 10 Gs riding on you. Just show enough to win. One of my personal favorite stories of all time. No, 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 great story. I'll get back to uh, whatever I was talking about. I think I just told this to somebody. I told it to Cardill. There was a, let me write this down. Oh, shoot. Um, wait a minute now. Remind me to say shim, shim, and sex. Okay, shim sex. Comedian Frank Fay, who's married to Barbara Stanley. Her first husband. He's called into court. He was a, he was a stand-up comedian, and supposed to be a very funny stand-up comedian before long before my time. Supposedly Bob Hope ripped off this act, but anyway, he's called into court. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. What is your name, sir? My name is Frank Fay. What do you do for a living? I am a comedian and am the funniest man in the world. After it's all over, one of Frank Fay's friends comes over and says, why did you say that? He said, I could not tell a lie. I was under oath. Is that a great story or is that a great story? The funniest man in the world. But to come back to Shims and, and whatever, we had these three folks on. And uh, two of them, as I say, were very camp. But the other person was apparently a very serious female impersonator. This guy came in with only bare essentials. He didn't really have time to do much makeup and whatever. But he had, long, he had a long wig on, slender. Make a long story short, this guy was a babe. <laughs> I still don't know what he looked like as a man, but as a woman, boy, he looked great. And he wasn't even trying Oh, man, that he looked good. And all during the interview, I'm kidding around with this guy. I'm holding his hand. I'm this, I'm that. I mean, I couldn't get over it because if the guy had been in full, you know, female regalia and looked that good, you would have said, well, they did it with mirrors and blah, blah, blah. This guy only had time to put on a little bit of lipstick. Just threw, He said, I just threw something on, you know. And the guy, oh, man. Woo! And I hadn't held his with anything a long time back then either.
So I did, and I did the whole show this way, and I was flirting with the guy throughout the show. I had a blast. These guys were great, too. Afterwards, I asked myself, and it's a question that men ask themselves all the time, not necessarily about this, but you just ask yourself in, in, in terms of what are you capable of? The deepest, darkest side of you, what are you capable of? The weirdest, kinkiest, most fantasy-oriented side of you, what are you capable of? And of course, what is it that lowers your inhibitions, making you capable of doing things that you otherwise would not consider? Drink. So I asked myself the question, <laughs> if you were drunk enough, all right, and you knew that this individual was a male posing as a female, but you knew it, if you were drunk enough, want to take a guess as to what the answer was? Why don't we take a poll? 333-136-0412, the area code. Nobody will call on this. Pound 1360. <laughs> Nobody called, you bunch of cowards. The answer uh, to that burning question, which I knew we're waiting for, I couldn't get that drunk. If I knew it was a guy, it just would lose all appeal to me because it's a guy. You know, another guy. And it's just... You know, your inhibitions, are, and all, you, all that happens, I've said this before, <sighs> drinking lowers your inhibitions. And you do things that you might think about doing sober, or they might be in the back of your mind doing sober, but you don't do them. But the capability is there. I lied while I was drinking. I cheated. Man, did I lie. So all I did was lie. I cheated, stole money, did a lot of bad things. Have done none of those things sober. If anything, I make it a point to try never to lie. God knows I never cheat, and I ain't stolen jack anything from anybody since I've been straight. But I know that those capabilities are there. Once you tell me it's a fellow, that's the end of it. Oh, somebody wanted to tell me the Desi Arnaz Cesar Romero story. You know that story. Desi Arnaz had a fling with Cesar Romero. Well, I knew. I, I knew. Well, Cesar Romero was gay too. Well, yeah, I remember. Yeah, you I told you that, that story. Yeah. You, you told me the Cesar Romero story. Yeah, he was, time, he, he was guesting on. He was guesting no on idea. the I Love Lucy show and the on the Lucy Desi Comedy Hour, and Desi Arnaz was after him all week. And finally, uh, Cesar said, "Do you want to do what I think you want to do?" And of course, he said, "Lucy, I'm home," and they did it. And every time I saw that. That particular Lucy does a comedy hour. I can't he, watch it anymore. When he just, came it's on, just, he had some explaining to do. Yeah, I mean, he was. I mean, here was Caesar supposedly dating Ann Southern, and there's Desi and Lucy. And the fact of the matter is, they're in the uh, they're in the cabin room or something, having their own, you know, little song and dance going on there. And of course, oh yeah, Tallulah Bankhead and Hattie McDaniel. They had a an affair too. If you're old enough to remember Tallulah, Hattie McDaniel was uh, Mammy and the Gone with the Wind, whose great line was, "It ain't fitting. It ain't fitting. It ain't fitting." That ain't fitting. And Tallulah Bankhead was just another human being altogether. Uh, anyway, uh, wait, wait, this is only four minutes? I thought it was longer than that. No. Son of a gun. Well, I'll tell you what. You have, a, you have an old one of him, too, don't you? You have that other CD with the yeah, older the ones? Well, we'll drag that out. I'll, I'll get it. Drag that out. And, and tell me when you have it ready. Let's play, let's play them in some sort of a uh, chronological order. Being as how it's a Tuesday afternoon and things are... On the slow side, if you will, or for that matter, if you won't, uh, I asked Greg to pull out a uh, telephone conversation, which he did, and I realized that we have a couple of conversations with this particular fellow, so what I'm asking Greg to do now is to pull out an older conversation, which will lead into our more colorful, or excuse me, our more uh, recent conversation with this uh, individual. We're not really sure who this person really is. We think we know who he is, but we're not 100% certain. This gentleman used to call the program on a fairly regular basis with tales of conspiracies and the numbers 666 that just suggested all <laughs> kinds of weird, mysterious, spooky goings on that things aren't always what they seem to be. Now you have two conversations with him on the have, first time. There's actually three on this. On, uh, on give this, me the uh, read, read to read to me what they say. Okay, uh, Darnell part one, two, and three. Well, let's try Darnell part one. Okay, yeah, right. I, have, I have it queued past the uh, the call, call letter thing. Okay, this this gentleman again. You're going to hear a conversation which 
when I first heard this guy talk, I said, this is a put on. After a few more conversations, I said, maybe this guy's for real. <laughs> I was convinced that it was for real when I didn't hear from the guy for years. And then all of a sudden he turned up one day not too long ago. So this is just from a number of years ago, a conversation with this fellow. We think he's serious, but go no. Anyway, make a long story short. This is all about Princess Di and Dodie and who killed Di and why she was killed. And Ted Turner enters into this in an underground city in Atlanta and the Trilateral Commission, I want to tell you. And the reason they bumped off Doty, he was an African-American, even though he never set foot in this country. That's a whole other story. So here we go, Doug and Darnell. Well, this is Darnell. 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 Hi, yeah, okay. Yeah, I just want to remind people I'm the first one to come out with the uh, murder uh, theory. That's right. You were the uh, you kind of that? you were kind of the godfather of this whole uh, conspiracy theory. Uh, uh, and what was your theory again? Why she was killed? Well, she was killed, and the reason was because the queen did not want her to be associated with an uh, African American. Well, who's an African American in all the, of this? Uh, the, what's his name? Dodi. He's not he's, from. He's, he's from Africa. See, because Egypt is in Africa. Yeah, I understand that, but it's not in America. Well. That's, that's, that's my theory. And you yeah, but wait, wait, wait. I, 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 and, it is. I, did, I, got, I, I got something new for you now. I, well, before you give me something new, let's go back to Dodie, all right? Yeah. Dodie is, an, Dodie is an Egyptian, Egypt, okay? And where's Egypt? Africa. But it's not exactly. an... But, but Danell... He's African. Danell, where's America? It's not in Africa, is it? Is he an American citizen? I don't know what it was. He was living in England. Well, but he that... movies in uh, America. Danell... England isn't in America either. I don't it's think he Europe. would. Uh, that's right. So he would not qualify as an African American, would he? In your in your mind. Uh well, how? Well, wait a minute now. How can this guy possibly be an African American? He's a black man from Africa. He's an African. But you called him an African American. Well, I call black guys African Americans. Even but if they no matter where they're from. But wait a minute. This is a guy who's 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 not an American citizen. This is a guy allegedly. Who's, who's done, well, not allegedly, Donnell, he's not, all right? This is a guy, well, let's take, let's take the, the, the several million Africans in Africa. The Africans. Who we know for fact, not allegedly, have never been to America, okay? A lot of natives in Africa don't even know where America is. Would we also refer to them as African-American? Yes, we would. Why? Because that, that is the politically correct thing, man. We mean politically correct. It's, it's, it's geographically moronic. Well, I don't make the rules. I just follow them. Well, those aren't rules. You want to hear the new thing or Danelle, what? No, I, I do want to hear the new thing. I'm dying to hear the new thing, but we have to get this clarified. No, because while well, we're waiting here, somebody else is going to take credit for no, it. No, nobody's going to nobody's gonna take credit for anything, Janelle. It's your story, baby. You're going to run with it. You're the one that's going to get the Pulitzer. But i got to go back to this African-American. Okay, that's what? I have to go back to this African-American. There's nothing politically correct about calling an African guy who's never been out of Africa an African-American. So you feel that, that, that she was not murdered, that it was African? No, I didn't even... Happened there, sir! And, and all these things just happened. Danelle, I, yeah. we haven't even gotten to that yet. I am trying to tell you that to call Dodie an African-American is not only not politically incorrect... To not call him an African American is also correct. The guy is not an American citizen. Well, he's an African. But he's not an American. So what's your point? So Who's why on you first? Him an African American. That's why. That's what the Queen's calling him. That's why the Queen never American. called him an African American. The only person ever called Dodie an African American is you. And I'm not getting credit for it. You're giving the credit all to Saddam. <laughs> I should give you credit for being an idiot for calling a guy who's yeah, not an African American an African American. Geraldo, I should be on Geraldo. Well, Danelle, why don't you call Geraldo? Well, listen, man. Why don't you, uh, Danelle, Danelle, I, I have, Danelle, I'll give you Geraldo's phone number. I don't want to be on with that fool. Look, man. You'd rather be on with this fool. Well, then you've got to correct yourself. You what, goes, you know, what, I don't know, what, I don't know, what, what, the, the African there, he's from Africa. He's an African, he's not an African. Danelle, Danelle. Danelle, yeah. he's an African. He's not an African-American. Would you, No, you didn't. You've been calling a guy an African-American for the last ten minutes. Well, I, I, Why don't you admit African. you're wrong, Danelle? He's an African. Thank you. Now, we have to break, Danelle. Oh, man. Uh, now, settle down. I give whoa, 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 you... Whoa, whoa, Listen to what I got. Now, I can't. I have to go to the traffic. When we come back... Let me give, uh, let me give them a teaser before we go. All right, give us a tease. What the, all the mail planes that were shot down... Yeah. And, and the uh, Ted Turner donation. Right. 
and the El Nino all, all have in common. This is all part of the plot. It's all, it, it is. Okay, now, Danella, I want you to hold on, okay? Because yeah. when we come back... When we come back. All right, now okay. we're going to come back. Let's go back. You got to, the yep. stern all right, all right, kill that. Kill that thing. All right, you got the Darnell part two. Not the current, but let's go to Darnell part two. All right, this is, let me know when you're ready, Darnell part two. Well, let's talk about Ted Turner first. What, what is it's this all about? It's all, it's all one, man. What? It's all one conspiracy. Oh, it's all one conspiracy. Okay, so Ted Turner was involved in the hit of Princess Di. No, 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 man. This is a new one. It's a new one. Yeah. Well, what did Ted Turner have to do with Francis? Well, see, here's what it is. These planes that are being shot down. What planes that are being shot down? The Air Force plane. There was one in Baltimore. There was all over the place. All oh, over okay. The world. All right. Yeah, those that were shot down. There's a spacecraft up there called Mir. M I R. M I R. Everybody think it, that it's uh, not high tech, but it is. And they are shooting the things down. And then they they went to Ted Turner and told him they was going to shut down the CNN. They were going to shoot the satellite down in one minute. So what do you have to do? They extorted uh, like a million dollars, a billion dollars, something like that, from Ted Turner. Period. In other words, Ted Turner gave away that billion he's dollars. Man. He's not going to give the money away for nothing. He's uh, not tired for that you're money. Saying, you're saying that Ted Turner gave away this billion dollars under duress. I don't the, know about the rest, but uh, they said they're going to shoot a satellite down. Who, who said they were going to shoot a satellite down? Well, I don't want to get, get into that right now, but there is a... Well, why not? Give me, well, give me an idea of who said this. This is trilateral. The trilateral commission. Uh, commission, I just know what it's trilateral. The trilateral somebody, they went to Ted Turner and said, either give us a billion bucks or we're going to blow up your, uh, they your already network. They shot the planes down. They proved that they, they could do it. Yeah. And they're controlling the weather, too. They're controlling the weather, too. The trilateral commission is. Now, now, oh, wait, wait, hold on. No, the Cassidines. How is the Trilateral Commission controlling... What, what, what is M-I-R spelled backwards? M-I-R is R-I-M. What's that say? Rim? Pacific Rim. That is where the El Nino is located. Oh, I see. Okay. It's off the code. All right, so Ted Turner, though, uh, before we get back to Princess Die, and I have to take another break, so for God's sake, don't uh, hang up. But- Darnell, I have your, to... Your breaks are like the pledge time on, on Channel 13, man. They go on forever. Darnell... Donnell. What a great line. I apologize. I have to pay bills. You know what I'm saying? I got you, man. I have to pay bills. It's all about selling soap. All right? So just... How long is it going to be? Now, am I going to be on delay, or am I going to be with nothing? All right, I'm going to have... What I'm going to do, Darnell, is have Lawrence talk to you when we take the break. All right? It should be four minutes or so, and then we'll come back, and we'll have you uh, get into this earth-shattering news about the uh, hit uh, on Princess Di. So don't go away. Lawrence... You know, please. he has uh, Elaine Bly's agent now. Damn straight. I can <laughs> see that. He's, he's really getting in there for more time every day. Uh, All right, right now, cool. right, kill that. Kill that. Now, how long is the Darnell part number three? It's actually about nine minutes or so. Nine. All right, well, let's skip that. Now, that that gives you an idea of what Darnell did about 10 or 11 years ago, where he's talking about these different things. And then, lo and behold, we didn't hear from him for ages. And I just had an assumption, you know, the trilateralist got him, or Ted Turner got him, or the Queen of England, or, or somebody, right? And lo and behold, uh, I guess it was about a month ago. Around that time, yeah. Around a month ago, we get this phone call from, guess who? During the, immor- the, during the uh, press conference of the year. The Doug Earth press there. conference of the year. That's right. Well, let's hear it. Uh, where am I? Anonymous, your name is Talk 1360. What's up? Uh, where, where Walt Baby Love at? Where who? Oh, Walt, Walt Baby, Baby Love. Love. I, you know, that's a good question, man. I don't know. He's still, I don't think he's on the air anymore. Or if he is, he's syndicated uh, because he still writes a column for Radio and Records. You can find R&R off of Drudge, Radio and Records, and pick up on Walt Baby Love there and find out what he's doing. I'm okay. Call later in the week. I'm going to give you an update on uh, what's really going on with James Brown. What's really going on with James Brown? Well, what is Radio real? activity is connected to the, uh, uh, the the Russian spy that got poisoned. But I, this is a news conference. I don't want to interrupt the news conference. That's all right. Is this Darnell? Uh, what did I say? You said you were anonymous. That is correct. All right. Well, you give me... I'd, I'd love to talk to you right now. What is going on with James Brown? I'm going to have to call back later because of uh, security reasons. But I want to... Uh, the, the reason that they have not buried James Brown, he's radioactive. James Brown is not dead? He's, he's dead. He, he's, he was poisoned with ra- radioactive. Well, who poisoned him? 
That's what I'm going to have to get into. That's what the story's all about. That's why I have the story. Nobody else has it. No one else has the story but I'm you. Number one. Will you promise to call me tomorrow? Well, I'd rather not give the exact date. See well, I understand. well security. security. I understand the security. Will you call me back whenever you can because I will put and, you... And if it goes in the ground, it's going to poison the ground. So I'm going to give you the whole update. And it's connected to the Russian spy. He got poisoned with radioactivity. But, I, but wait a minute. I can't wait. James Brown used to own a radio station. He's radioactive. He's you can't put him in the ground. You can't put him in the ground because he's radioactive because he owns well, a radio. That is correct. Well, wait a minute now. There's a whole story behind the story. That's where I'm going to call later. But I want to understand something. This radioactivity, you mean to tell me that somebody... Well, why would anybody want to poison James Brown? Well, that's why no one figures it out but me. You don't suppose this has something to do with the Princess Di, do you? It's really connected more to uh, uh, Ted Turner. Ted Turner. <laughs> and that underground city in Atlanta? When you bury somebody, where you put them? Underground. Uh, the underground thing in Atlanta, you know, yeah. He don't want the underground uh, contaminated. Uh, it, w underground is contaminated. He don't want it. That's why he don't want James Brown put in the ground. They don't want James Brown put in the ground because they contaminate the ground? Who lives in an underground city? Ted Turner. Correct. So Ted Turner doesn't want James Brown in the ground because he'll contaminate Atlanta? Now, now you're gonna you're gonna run with that like you like you come up with it. No no no, you came up with it. I will of course give I did. I will give you all the credit in the world for this, but I never get the credit. I don't even get the call on the station ever. Well you get the call whenever you want. We haven't heard from you in quite some time. That's why I'm willing to give you all the time that you want right now to I'm gonna call later because I I got a good story on this one. You got a good story? Well tell I'm me always do. I can't wait. I'm dying to hear this. Well, then you're going to have a good week because I'm going to call. You tell that grog you got to put me through. Tell that grog you put it through. Grog, you, grog, you put this guy through, will you, for crying out loud? What's the matter? I bet he's a part of the conspiracy. Well, if you take Greg, if you take his name, it is a little bit of a problem. There is a little. Wh wh why? Because of the you sixes? Take a little, if you take A, that equal one. Right. B equal two. Right. If you do that with Greg, it comes out to three, six. Six, six, six. Exactly. You know, this explains something. I always thought he had something of a of a of a tint, uh, sort of a halo around him. Maybe he maybe now he's, you got to figure it out. See. So in other words, he may be radioactive too. No, I didn't say that. You didn't say that. Okay. I, well, I don't want. I don't know. I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, right. and then I'm going to talk. Well, I got more to talk about because related to Ted Turner is Anderson Cooper. What is Anderson Cooper? Is he radio? Uh, I can't see you. You don't have it figured out. See, I do. Well, wait a minute. I was Anderson. That's why I'm going to I'm gonna have to call back. But is Anderson. My time is up. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. My time is up. All right. Your time is up. Back. You, you going to put me on? I'll put you on any time of the day or night. I'm going to lake him. Absolutely. I'm going soda crack. Okay. Well, it's quarter to six on AM News Talk 1360. My goodness, that was a uh, pleasant surprise. Uh, <laughs> that was Darnell. Uh, Lawrence, I hope you heard that. That was Darnell. Has he called back since? Not you since. radioactive so and so, you with those three. Wait a minute, A B yeah, C D E F. Can you see me glowing e, here in the Wait a minute, room? there's a part I didn't get. How did he six 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 you? A B C D E F G. <laughs> That's seven off. letters. R is more than seven <laughs> letters. E is A B C. I never could quite figure out how he came up with you and, and the six. Your guess is as good as and mine. And the six six six. That doesn't make any sense to me. But Darnell, please, or whoever you are, please. We need to hear more. James Brown is radioactive because James Brown owned a radio station. And the hole in the ground in the underground city. Sounds like the handle with the candle, if that's an old or low a little bit. Um, where do you suppose he is? I have absolutely no clue. Doug Hurt to Darnell. Doug Hurt. See, one of the things that has always disappointed me about Pittsburgh, and there have been few disappointments, very few, but one of them, we don't have enough callers like that. No. I love people like that. I wish we had more callers like that. You'd be in New York City, man. You could do a whole show. In fact, if in New York City, Darnell would be the normal one, okay? Yeah, it reminds, <laughs> me, it reminds me of a lyric in The Night Fly by Donald Fagan, the title track to his album. There's a, there's a verse in there where he says, So you say there's a race of men in the trees. You're for tough legislation. Thanks for calling. Mm -hmm. We've waited all night for calls like these. Oh, that, absolutely. That sums up uh, believe me, I would, take, I would take 8 million phone calls like that. And every time I get one, well, part of the problem, too, is in the afternoons. 
the strange folks tend to come out at night. Now you have Jane in there, don't you? Somewhere, can you play a brief uh, Jane I've got, clip off I've got of the? A ton of Jane cut side. Uh, um, or give me uh, uh, one of them. Uh, read the read the different ones to me out loud. This is a lady who used to call the show too. I've played these before, but it's been a while. Um, she has one on evil gang leaders. Uh, Diddly Doug Hearth, Angel of a Happy Death. Angel, uh, is that I, Jane? When I die, yeah. And when I die, how long when, is that when, when I die? When I die is like 40 seconds. Uh, let's hear a little bit of Jane. Right, Again, this woman, I guess. This thing Jane, if you're still alive, for God's sake, would you please call God? Here it is. Oh, when I die, I hope I get what I want. A beautiful, gorgeous, permanent home in heaven above. Where life is complete. Oh, yeah. And faith and hope and trust in Almighty God is fulfilled. Oh, yeah. Yes. When I die. When I die. I hope I get what I want. I hope you do, too. Now, kill that. We have another short Jane one because uh, Jane would call and she would sing that song uh, with... Slight variation, shall we say. It always seemed to be the same subject. What do we have next here? I want to die <laughs> My favorite. So I can enter heaven. I want to die so I can go home. Oh, yes. I want to die. So I can enter heaven. Oh, yes, I want to die so I can go home. Beautifully done. I want to tell you. Oh, that's what happens when you work. Well, I was in the morning show. <laughs> you don't have to wait till the sun goes down. How much time do we have? Got about a, little, about a minute and a half. About a minute and a half? Well, I'll tell you what. Tomorrow we've got nothing. Uh, we were going to have uh, Travis on, but they've canceled that for a couple yeah. weeks because uh, apparently they don't have enough acts to uh, announce. LG on Thursday. You're talking to the group on Friday. Don't forget the Moly Show, 1320 WJS, 6 until 12 midnight each and every Sunday night. 50s, early 60s, rock and roll. Jane will be here next Thursday. Want to hang your head on that one? By Cracky, you should. And we're out of time, or at least I am. Let's give it to the Greg. It's the Greg Show. It's Greg time. Boy, are you putting your putting a lot of blind faith in me? That's for sure. But uh, no, I'm <laughs> just hearing those cuts is amazing to me because <laughs> um, I've only been producing Doug's show now for about off and on over the last three years or so because we did it go through one lineup change um, back in back in 2004 in which Doug was moved to the mornings and I would come in and do the top ten list with him. But uh, you know and. But when, uh, when Jerry Boyer left us in uh, 2005, we moved Doug back to the afternoons. And I've had a blast doing his show um, ever since then. And I, I had a blast in my first stint, too. I had, a, I had a blast doing it as well. But um, it's interesting when you get Good callers morning. like, Good morning! You know, like, it, like I say, we'll have Jane on uh, next Thursday. But uh, we're out of time. I'm off to rehearsal. Hope you have a good evening. We'll talk to you tomorrow right here on AM News Talk 1360. Have yourselves a great night.